Welcome, Welcome back to the 21 Days of Encouragement, the Depression Series, Breaking the Strongholds of the Enemy. And I'm so excited that you guys came back for day two. Yesterday, um, you know, we started talking about depression. Mm -hmm. We gave a definition of what depression is and uh, we, we, we began to kind of work with that and, and we were, we're still forming a working definition. And we even talked about how depression is a curse and it's a generational curse. Um, and so today we're going to kind of talk about that and we're going to talk about the signs of depression. We're going to perfect our definition uh, of depression a little bit more. But we're also going to talk about some signs and, and, and how you can tell if your loved one is depressed or if you may be dealing with some depression. Uh, because in truth, I dealt with depression and didn't fully know I was depressed. Um, and it took someone to kind of show me. It took Kristen actually coming and showing me, babe, you know, this isn't, this isn't normal. This isn't you you know, snap out of it. But, you know, when we look at depression and, and we, when we look at our definition of depression, um, I think it's also important that we pr point out that when dealing with depression, you know, you start to look at, you know, other people and what they have and what you don't have. And you look at, you know, how they're being blessed and you say, well, why not me? Why don't I have this? What's going on with me that I don't have? you know, all of this. And so it puts you in a place where you start to look down on yourself. Yeah, that's true. And you become depressed. The pressure from all of that builds up within you. And then it pushes down upon yourself. And then that's when, you know, <clears throat> some people, they find themselves in a position where, you know, they're depressed. And that's when we get the bipolar depression. Mm -hmm. Because they become so depressed and then there's a form of themselves that rises up because they're depressed, they start lashing out and doing things, and we call that bipolar. But let's talk about some symptoms and some signs of being depressed. Um, I remember when I went through my depression, um, I didn't fully know that I was depressed. You know, one thing that happened with me, um, the beginning of this year was a hard year for me. I mean, in February, I lost my job. And when I lost my job, you know, I've been working a job since I was 17. May not have always been the same job. I may have had a month or two where I was not working because, you know, it was basketball season or because something else was going on. But I've had a job since 17. And so for me not to be working, it played within my mind. And to actually lose a job and not know why you lost it. I mean, you know, they gave me some superficial answer, but I mean, you know, you know, like, that's just not it because there has to be more. And, and so, you know, it, it played in my mind and I began to get depressed about that. And then, so, you know, February came, March was my birthday. But then in April, we found my dad, dead in his home, had been there for two weeks. And so, you know, just going through that and then, you know, some family issues arose out of that and, you know, feeling disconnected from family and all of that, it caused depression to creep in in my life. And, and, and I remember, you know, I'm trying to go on with a normal life, trying to do things in, in a normal fashion, but then there were some days where I just didn't, I, you know, I remember, baby, there was a day um, where you had left and went to work and... Uh, I just, I laid in the bed half the day. I didn't turn on any lights. I didn't open up the blinds. I didn't want to do anything, go anywhere, see anybody. And it took you coming home and saying, what's wrong? What's going on? You know, open up some blinds, turn on some lights. And, you know, it takes that sometimes because, you see, I didn't fully understand that I was depressed. I didn't even understand why I was going through or why I was feeling the way I was feeling. I mean, I know my dad had died and I was dealing with other stuff, but, you know, it, it just, to me, I was like, you know, I just thought I was having a bad day. But then we began to look at it and, you know, Kristen began to share with me, baby, you haven't been the same. Uh, you know, you, you haven't been doing it. And I was like, wow, I'm depressed. And, you know, when she said that to me, then I was able to address it and deal with it. But first, 
you have to recognize the signs. And we don't always recognize the signs within ourselves. But if you know someone and you and your you have a new relationship with them, whether it's a friend, a loved one, or a coworker, and you know they don't seem like them us their usual happy selves, then you have to pay attention to that because they could be battling with depression. And that is a curse of a spirit on their life that can be broken, that needs to be broken. And you can be the one to break that cycle in their life. But why don't you share your, your experience with depression and being depressed. Well, like you were saying, um, sometimes uh, it's, it's the constant stimuli or the, the constant um, circumstances that come repeatedly, yeah. which causes the pressure, which causes you to become depressed, which causes you to start thinking negative um, in your mind or in your heart about yourself. And my situation uh, was, uh, I had all these goals and everything that I wanted to do that I set out to accomplish and it seemed like every time I reached the goal I didn't uh, fulfill or get what I thought that I deserved or I desired yes. and since I didn't receive it the way I thought I should mm -hmm. or um, the way I thought it would come to me um, eventually I just gave up eventually I just said I'm just not going to try anymore I just I'm not good enough and at the same time, I was hearing the words from other people saying, you know, I'm better than you, and, you know, I do this, and I do that, and I'm, the, you know, just a person, being around a person that's always exalting themselves or trying to uh, make it seem like they're better than you, you tend to, you deflect it, but at the same time, you're still hearing it, and you're conscious of yes, it. Yes. So, those words are powerful, and... You can come against those words and you can delete those words, cancel those words in the name of Jesus. But all of that was taking a toll on me and I'm a fighter. Like I fight. And even James when, you know, he lost his job and, you know, even when he, he found his dad in his home, he still was fighting. But it's like when so many things come at you, it's like it gets harder to fight. Or you're fighting, you're just not fighting as hard, or you just have that moment where you're just like, oh, I just need some rest, or I just need to sit down. And you, you don't fully understand what's going on until a person comes and speaks a word into you. Right. And James and I were walking by the river one day, and he was saying, you know, what you have is awesome. Like you, you know, you're great. You know, he just began to speak to me and minister to me. And as he was doing that, he was reminding me of things that God had already spoken to me that I just, you know, over time had pushed out the window or put it, swept it under the rug. And he was like, you know, you're great. Let's do things with this. Let's, you know, whatever you want to do to make, you know, he wanted to help me with whatever I felt like I wasn't accomplished in. And he's spoken to me, spoken to my life. And Proverbs says, you know, all you need is one word yes. to clear that up. Yes. And he came back and God spoke to him and gave him the definition for depression. And immediately I said, I was depressed. You yes. know, and I'm thinking, me? You know, right. person of faith, person that knows I have authority, you know, knows that I can operate in the power and the fullness of God, depressed? You know, and but it's true it can happen to anybody and it's nothing to be ashamed of, but it has to be addressed, you know, yes. it has to be it can be broken and you can help others by speaking one word, by saying, Hey, I see that you're like this, you know, let's do something about it. Right. And that's what that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things like Kristen alluded to the scripture, you know, the, the, the scripture that we're going to kind of hinge around this whole time, this whole series, is Proverbs 12 and 25, where it says, anxiety in the heart of a man. And, you know, you become anxious about certain things, and you begin to think, I'm not good enough. I don't have all the things I would like to have. Or, you know, I think these people are talking about me and saying these things about me. Or people may actually be saying things about you and doing things that cause you to feel as though, you're not good enough, and 
and then it just weighs down on you and you find yourself depressed but God said all it takes is a good word and any word that comes from God is good and he will deliver you he'll pull you out of it you know we were talking with a friend of ours uh, the other day and, and he made the perfect illustration you know he talked about how you know the devil can have a massive grip on your legs you know he can have a massive grip on your life and he can be doing all that he can to pull down on you to pull you with every bit of strength that he has but all it takes is God to take his pinky and just lift you up out of it. No matter how strong that the devil may have you, whatever he may have you with, right. it just takes a word from God right. and your whole situation can change. One word can change your entire life. And so friends, I want to encourage you as we go throughout this, as we deal with depression, and as we go through this entire series, just remember, in your times of need, in your times of sorrow, remember the word of the Lord, because it maketh a heart glad, it maketh the heart merry, it lifts up the spirit. And in times of depression, remember that he said he would never leave you, nor would he forsake you. You may be depressed and you may be by yourself, and, and you may not have anyone around you. You may have lost all of your family, all of your friends. And then all of a sudden, you just so happen to find this video. You just so happen to find this link. I want you to know, and I want you to understand that God is trying to pull you out. God wants to pull you out of that state that you're in. You feel as though you have no one. God says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He is here for you right now and he wants to heal you deliver you and set you free you see that's what this entire series is all about it's about healing and deliverance you don't have to live with those curses that depression in your life whatever generational curses strongholds that may be in your life whether it be you know here's here's one thing that i find interesting you know when you look at it you see um, and we're going to talk more about this, but you begin to have these curses, these things that come upon your life. You know, if somebody in your family did something against God and God was not pleased with it, and so the punishment of it uh, dwells on and it goes on throughout generation and generation, and then it causes a defect in your bloodline. We call it a defect. God calls it a curse. And your bloodline is cursed. And then we begin to have depression that rises up. All sorts of mental disorders. And, and there's so many scriptures that even uh, qualify this all the more. And we're going to deal with those things. We're going to talk more about this. But I want you to know that you don't have to live with these things. Just like in Mark chapter 9, when Jesus spoke to the, the, the demon and the boy and cast it out. And he was healed from that very hour. All it takes, as Jesus told the man, is that you must believe. You must believe. Believe in God. And know that He is able to deliver you. No matter what kind of hold the devil has on you, God is able to deliver you with just one word. So friends, I want to pray for you. I want to pray, and we want to pray that God would just speak into your life. Because I know that you are seeking deliverance. You're seeking a word from the Lord. And today, your word has come. God is here for you. He wants to heal you and deliver you. And he says, rise. Rise up with purpose. Yes. Rise up with power. Yes. And I declare that the Spirit of God will rise up in your life with healing in his way. You are healed from this day. I want to pray for you. Father God, we come to you now, Father God, saying thank you, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for speaking into our very lives, Father God. 
speaking into our very situations, oh God. See, Father, we have so much that weighs down upon us, oh God. We have responsibilities, Father God. We have things that we need to do, and it seems as though no one sees, no one cares, Father God. But Lord, you, ha, you have placed us, Father God, on your mind, Father God, and you've placed this on our minds, oh God, so that we can speak into your people, oh God, and declare and decree that you see them, Father God, and that healing has come into their lives. Healing has come into their heart. They don't have to bear the weight of it alone, oh God. But you are there with them. You are there to deliver them, to lift them up. Now, Father God, I pray, Father God, for an immediate turnaround probably now, oh God. Yes, I come against every stronghold, every bondage, everything that is in your life that is not of God. I come against it now and I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I cast it out and I cast it into the very pits of hell. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I declare and I decree that you are free. Right now, I lose wholeness, I lose blessings, I yes. lose love, I lose joy into your life. In the very name of Jesus, you are not alone. Yes. But God bears the weight of your burdens. He bears the weight of everything that you deal with. In Jesus' name. I declare and I decree that the spirit of depression is broken over your life. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. Friends, this has been day two of the 21 days of encouragement. The depression series. Breaking the strongholds of the enemy off of your life. And friends, I know that God has broken it. The chains are broken. The bonds are broken. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Now come back tomorrow because there's so much more that we're going to discuss. I know we dealt with healing and deliverance even today. And we're going to deal with it every day. We're going to continue to deal with it because God wants to set you free. There's so many people that God is just waiting for the opportunity to speak into your life. But you have to come back so that you can hear the word from the Lord. Because a good word maketh the heart glad. We love you, friends. So much. You be blessed.